So who wrote the book of Revelation? Well, in the same way that buildings contain clues that unveil the identity of their architects, so too books contain clues that unveil the identity of their authors. In the case of the book of Revelation, three possibilities have been put forward, but only one fits the design. First is the notion, a notion that can be dismissed rather rapidly, namely the idea that Revelation was written pseudonymously. Pseudonymity, writing under a false name, was largely practiced by writers who lacked authority. Thus, they borrowed the names of authentic eyewitnesses to the life and times of Christ to create an error of credibility. In sharp contrast, the book of Revelation provides ample internal evidence that it was written by a Jew intimately acquainted with the historical events and locations that he was writing about. Only a handful of extremists today even countenance the possibility that Revelation could have been written pseudonymously. Furthermore, it is commonly argued that Revelation was written by a shadowy figure named John the Elder. Like pseudonymity, this contention has its feet firmly planted in midair. It would be better grounded if there were even a shred of historical certainty that John the Elder existed to begin with. It is far more likely that John the Elder is just another way of referring to John the Apostle. Indeed, John described himself as the Elder not to distinguish himself from the Apostle, but to emphasize his authority and his seniority. In short, there's scant evidence that a distinct John the Elder even existed, and sufficient evidence that John the Elder and John the Apostle are one and the same. Finally, while there is little to commend the notion that a shadowy figure named John the Elder wrote the book of Revelation, there's ample evidence that it was written by John the Apostle. The very fact that the author of the Apocalypse simply calls himself John is a dead giveaway that he was well known throughout the churches in Asia Minor. Additionally, the fingerprints of John the Apostle are all over the Apocalypse. One need only open their eyes and ears to apprehend the clues. For example, John and John alone identified Jesus as the Word or Logos. Likewise, John alone identified Jesus as the true witness. And it is John who most exploited the Mosaic requirement of two witnesses. Added to this, there is undeniable commonality in the symbolic use of the number seven that transcends its literal meaning. It's also noteworthy that, like the Gospel of John, Revelation is a literary masterpiece. Identifying John as the author of the Apocalypse goes a long way toward shutting the door to speculations that Revelation was a late first century or even a second or third century pseudepigraphal gospel, sort of like the Gospel of Judas. Moreover, the later the date, the less likelihood that Revelation was written by an apostle or an associate of an apostle as posited by the early Christian church. The conclusion of the matter is straightforward. There is no evidence that Revelation was written pseudonymously or by an imaginary John the Elder. The evidence convincingly points instead to John the Apostle as the author of the Apocalypse. Just as the architect's fingerprints are all over our residence, so the Apostle's fingerprints are all over Revelation. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9.